Daphne, you need to understand, I just borrowed it. You and Elliot are doing so well. I thought it wouldn't matter. Mabel's voice was dismissive, leaving my heart pounding with disbelief. I gripped the phone tighter, my knuckles turning white. Borrowed? Mabel, you took $30,000 from our joint savings without asking. That's not borrowing, that's stealing. Don't be so dramatic, Mabel scoffed. It's family money. I'm sure Elliot wouldn't mind. It's not just Elliot's money, I snapped. It's our money, mine and his. We worked hard for it. Oh, please, Mabel said, her tone dripping with disdain. As if designing pretty little trinkets is real work. I took a deep breath, trying to calm the rage building inside me. Mabel, I want that money back in our account by the end of the week. Or what, she challenged. You'll tell Elliot? Go ahead. He'll understand. He knows how much I've sacrificed for him. The line went dead. I stared at the phone, my hands shaking. My name is Daphne, and I just discovered my mother-in-law has been stealing from us. I paced the living room, my mind racing. How long had this been going on? What else had she taken? And how was I going to tell Elliot? The front door opened, and Elliot walked in, his suit jacket slung over his shoulder. Hey, honey. How was your day? I turned to face him, my stomach in knots. Elliot, we need to talk. It's about your mother. His face immediately clouded with concern. What's wrong? Is she okay? She's fine, I said, my voice tight. But our bank account isn't. She took $30,000 from our savings. Elliot's eyes widened. What? There must be some mistake. There's no mistake, I said, pulling out my phone to show him the transaction. I just got off the phone with her. She admitted it. Elliot's face paled as he looked at the screen. I, I can't believe this. Why would she do that? She said she was borrowing it. I said, unable to keep the bitterness from my voice. Because we're doing so well. Elliot ran a hand through his hair, looking lost. Maybe she just needs some help. We should talk to her, see what's going on. I stared at him in disbelief. Elliot, she stole from us. This isn't about helping her, it's about protecting ourselves. She's my mother, Daphne, Elliot said, his voice rising. I can't just turn my back on her. And I'm your wife, I shot back. Don't I matter too? Elliot's face softened. Of course you do. I just, I need to talk to her. Figure out what's going on. I watched as he pulled out his phone, dialing Mabel's number. My heart sank as I realized this was going to be harder than I thought. Mom, Elliot said, his voice gentle. Can you come over? We need to talk. An hour later, Mabel swept into our living room, all designer clothes and expensive perfume. She kissed Elliot on the cheek before turning to me with a cold smile. Daphne, dear, I hear you've been making quite a fuss. I bit back a retort, letting Elliot take the lead. He sat down across from Mabel, his face serious. Mom, we need to talk about the money you took from our account. Mabel waved a hand dismissively. Oh, that. I told Daphne it's just a loan. I'll pay it back. When? I asked, unable to stay silent. And why didn't you ask us first? Mabel's eyes narrowed. I didn't think I needed permission to help myself to family money. It's not family money, I said, my voice rising. It's mine and Elliot's. We earned it. Daphne, Elliot said, his tone warning. He turned back to Mabel. Mom, we're happy to help if you need it, but you can't just take money without asking. We have bills to pay, a business to run. Mabel's lower lip trembled. I thought you'd understand, Elliot. After everything I've done for you. I watched in disbelief as Elliot's resolve visibly weakened. He reached out taking Mabel's hand. Of course I understand, but we need to set some boundaries. Can you pay the money back? Mabel sniffed, dabbing at her eyes with a monogrammed handkerchief. I, I'm not sure. Things have been so difficult lately. I couldn't take it anymore. Difficult? Mabel, you're wearing a $5,000 handbag. You just got back from a cruise. How is that difficult? Mabel's face hardened. I don't think that's any of your business, Daphne. It became my business when you stole from us, I snapped. Daphne, please, Elliot said, his voice strained. He turned back to Mabel. Mom, we need that money back. 
Can you sell something? Maybe cut back on expenses for a while. Mabel's eyes filled with tears. You'd ask your own mother to sell her things? To live like a pauper? I watched in growing frustration as Elliot faltered, caught between his mother's manipulation and his duty to our marriage. It was clear this was just the beginning of a much bigger problem. As Mabel continued to play the victim and Elliot struggled to find a middle ground, I made a silent vow. I would protect what we'd built, no matter the cost. If Mabel wanted a fight, she'd get one. And I intended to win. I stared at the computer screen, my fingers hovering over the keyboard. The design for our new collection was almost complete, but something felt off. I couldn't shake the nagging feeling that had been haunting me since Mabel's lone incident. Hey, Daph. Elliot called from the doorway of our home office. How's it coming along? I forced a smile. Almost there. Just tweaking a few details. Elliot walked over, resting his hands on my shoulders. It looks amazing. You've really outdone yourself this time. His praise should have filled me with pride, but instead, I felt a twinge of resentment. Ever since Elliot had left his corporate job to join my jewelry business, the lines between our personal and professional lives had blurred. Thanks, I said, trying to keep the tension out of my voice. How are the financials looking? Elliot's hand stiffened on my shoulders. About that, I've been thinking. Maybe we should consider giving my mom a small stipend, you know, to help her out. I swiveled in my chair to face him. Elliot, are you serious? After what she did. He ran a hand through his hair, a nervous habit I'd come to recognize. I know, I know, but she's still my mother, and she did raise me on her own. She raised you on your father's life insurance, I reminded him gently. And now she's trying to live off our hard work. Elliot's face clouded. That's not fair, Daphne. She's made mistakes, but... Mistakes? I interrupted, my voice rising. She stole from us, Elliot. And now you want to reward her for it. He stepped back, his expression hardening. I'm not rewarding her. I'm trying to help her. I stood up, needing to feel on equal footing. And what about helping us? Our business? Our future? That's what I'm doing, Elliot insisted. If we help her now, maybe she'll stop asking for more later. I laughed bitterly. You really believe that? Elliot, giving her money is like feeding a stray cat. She'll just keep coming back for more. His eyes flashed with anger. Don't talk about my mother like that. We stood there, the tension crackling between us. This wasn't just about Mabel anymore. It was about us, our partnership, our marriage. I need some air, I said finally, grabbing my jacket. I'm going for a walk. I didn't wait for his response, just headed out the door and into the cool evening air. My feet carried me to the nearby park, where I found a bench and sat down heavily. How had we gotten here? When Elliot first joined the business, it had seemed like a dream come true. My creative vision, his business acumen, we were unstoppable. But now, with Mabel's constant interference and Elliot's divided loyalties, everything felt off balance. My phone buzzed. A text from Clara. Hey girl, haven't heard from you in a while. Everything okay? I hesitated, then typed back. Not really. Can we meet for coffee tomorrow? Her response was immediate. Absolutely. 10 a.m. at our usual spot. See you there. I replied, feeling a small sense of relief. At least I had someone to talk to who wasn't caught in this mess. As I walked home, my mind raced with possibilities. We needed to set clear boundaries, not just with Mabel, but between our personal and professional lives. And I needed to take control of our finances before things spiraled further. Elliot was in the living room when I returned, his laptop open on the coffee table. He looked up as I entered, his expression guarded. Hey. Hey. I replied, shrugging off my jacket. We need to talk. He nodded, closing his laptop. I know. I'm sorry about earlier. I shouldn't have sprung that on you like that. I sat down next to him, taking a deep breath. Elliot, I love you. And I love our business. But we can't keep going like this. What do you mean? He asked, his brow furrowing. I mean we need clear boundaries, I explained. Between work and home. Between us and your mother. We need to protect what we've built. 
Elliot was quiet for a moment, then nodded slowly. You're right. I know you're right. It's just, it's hard, you know? Balancing everything. I took his hand, squeezing it gently. I know, but we're in this together, right? Partners in everything. He smiled, some of the tension leaving his face. Always. Good, I said, feeling more resolved than I had in weeks. Because I have some ideas about how we can move forward, starting with separate accounts for personal and business expenses. Elliot's eyebrows rose. You really think that's necessary? I do, I said firmly. We need to be able to track everything, especially with the business growing. And it'll make it easier to set limits on outside expenses. He caught my meaning, nodding slowly. Okay, let's do it. What else? As we talked into the night, hashing out plans and setting new ground rules, I felt a glimmer of hope. We could get through this as long as we stood united. But as I drifted off to sleep that night, a small voice in the back of my mind whispered a warning. This was just the beginning. Mabel wouldn't give up so easily, and our resolve would be tested again and again. I was ready for the fight. The question was, would Elliot stand with me when it really counted? The doorbell rang, its chime echoing through our house like a warning. I glanced at Elliot, who was engrossed in his laptop, before heading to answer myself. I opened the door to find Mabel standing there, decked out in a designer outfit that probably cost more than our monthly mortgage payment. Daphne, darling, she cooed, air kissing my cheeks. I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. Actually, we're quite busy. I started, but Mabel had already brushed past me into the house. Elliot, sweetheart, she called out. Your mother needs a favor. I followed her into the living room, my stomach nodding with dread. Elliot looked up from his work, his expression a mix of surprise and wariness. Mom, what are you doing here? Mabel perched on the edge of our sofa, her perfectly manicured hands clasped in her lap. Well, you see, there's this wonderful charity gala coming up next month. All the most influential people in the city will be there. I simply must attend. But, but what, Mom? Elliot asked, his voice tight. Well, I need a new dress, of course. And shoes. And perhaps a little something from your lovely jewelry line, Daphne dear. It would be such marvelous publicity for you both. I felt my blood pressure rising. Mabel, we've talked about this. We can't keep. Oh, don't be so stingy, Mabel interrupted, waving a dismissive hand. It's not as if you can't afford it. And really, it's an investment in your future. Think of the connections I could make for you at this gala. Elliot shifted uncomfortably in his seat. Mom, we've set up some new financial boundaries. We can't just. Boundaries? Mabel's voice took on a shrill edge. Is that what she's calling it? She turned to me, her eyes narrowing. I suppose you think you're very clever, turning my own son against me. That's not what this is about, I said, fighting to keep my voice level. We're trying to run a business here, Mabel. We can't keep dipping into our funds for personal expenses. Mabel's lip curled in disdain. Personal expenses? I'm talking about networking, about building your brand. But I suppose you wouldn't understand that, would you? You're just a small-time designer who got lucky. Mom, Elliot's voice was sharp. That's enough. Daphne has worked incredibly hard to build this business. And you've worked hard too, darling, Mabel said, her tone softening as she turned to Elliot. You both deserve to enjoy the fruits of your labor. What's the point of all this success if you can't indulge a little? I watched as Elliot's resolve wavered. Maybe, maybe we could spare a little for the dress, he said hesitantly. Elliot, no, I said firmly. We agreed on this. We can't keep enabling her. Mabel's face darkened. Enabling? Is that what you think this is? I'm not some addict, Daphne. I'm family. But I suppose you wouldn't understand that concept, would you? Always so cold, so calculating. That's rich coming from you. I snapped, my patience finally breaking. You're the one who's been calculating how to squeeze every last penny out of us. How dare you? Mabel gasped, clutching her pearls dramatically. Elliot, are you going to let her speak to me like this? Elliot looked between us, his face a mask of anguish. I, I think you should go, Mom. We can talk about this another time. 
Mabel stood, drawing herself up to her full height. I see. Well, I hope you're happy, Daphne. You've finally gotten what you wanted. My own son, turning his back on me. As she stormed out, slamming the door behind her, I turned to Elliot. I'm sorry, but we had to stand firm. He nodded, looking drained. I know. It's just, it's hard. I sat beside him, taking his hand. I understand, but we're doing the right thing. Later that evening, as I was checking our business email, I saw a message from Elliot's cousin, Sarah. Curious, I open it. Daphne, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to reach out because I've been hearing some concerning things from Aunt Mabel. She says you've been controlling Elliot's finances and cutting her off completely. I know it's none of my business, but I'm worried about the family dynamic. Is everything okay? I stared at the screen, my hands shaking with anger. So this was Mabel's game now? Spreading rumors, trying to turn the family against me? I called out to Elliot, my voice tight with fury. You need to see this. Your mother's been busy. As Elliot read the email, his face grew pale. I can't believe she'd do this. Can't you? I asked bitterly. She's trying to paint me as the villain, Elliot. She's manipulating everyone, including you. He looked at me, his eyes filled with a mix of sadness and determination. Not anymore. I'm done letting her come between us. We need to set the record straight with the family. I nodded, feeling a glimmer of hope. Together? Together, he agreed, squeezing my hand. As we sat down to craft a response to Sarah and plan our next moves, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. Mabel had underestimated us, thinking she could drive a wedge between us. But she'd only succeeded in bringing us closer together. This battle was far from over, but for the first time in weeks, I felt like we might actually win. The email from Gideon, our business mentor, landed in my inbox with a soft ping. I opened it, my heart racing as I scanned the contents. Daphne Elliot, it read, I have exciting news. A major retailer in Paris is interested in carrying your line. They want to meet with you both next month to discuss terms. This could be the international break you've been waiting for. I called out to Elliot, who was in the kitchen. Elliot, come here, quick. He rushed in, a dish towel still in his hands. What is it? Is everything okay? I turned the screen towards him, grinning. Read this. Gideon's lined up a meeting in Paris. This could be huge for us. Elliot's eyes widened as he read, a slow smile spreading across his face. Paris? Daphne, this is incredible. We hugged, both of us giddy with excitement. For a moment, all the stress of the past few weeks melted away. This was what we'd been working towards, a chance to take our business to the next level. We need to start planning, I said, already reaching for my notebook. Flights, hotel, samples to bring. Elliot's smile faltered slightly. What about mom? She's going to flip when she hears about this. I felt a twinge of irritation. Elliot, this isn't about your mother. This is about our business, our future. He nodded, but I could see the conflict in his eyes. I know, I know. It's just, she's been having a hard time lately. Maybe we could. No. I cut him off firmly. We are not bringing her into this. She'll find a way to make it all about her, just like she always does. Elliot sighed, running a hand through his hair. You're right. I'll talk to her, explain that this is a business trip. I squeezed his hand, trying to recapture our earlier excitement. This is our moment, Elliot. Let's not let anything spoil it. Over the next few days, we threw ourselves into preparations. I spent hours selecting the perfect pieces to showcase, while Elliot poured over financial projections and marketing strategies. We were so focused that we almost forgot about the Mabel situation. Almost. The call came on a Tuesday afternoon. I was in the middle of packing some samples when my phone rang. Elliot's name flashed on the screen. Hey, how'd the meeting go? I asked, knowing he'd been out with a potential local investor. His voice was tight when he answered. It went fine. But, Daphne, we have a problem. Mom found out about Paris. My stomach dropped. How? I don't know. She must have overheard me talking to someone. She showed up at the cafe where I was meeting the investor, making a scene about how we're abandoning her. 
I closed my eyes, trying to keep my temper in check. What did you tell her? I tried to explain that it was a business trip, but she wouldn't listen. She? She's insisting on coming with us. Absolutely not, I snapped. Elliot, you can't be serious. I know, I know, he said, sounding defeated. But she's threatening to tell everyone that we're leaving her destitute, that we're using the business to cut her out of the family fortune. I laughed bitterly. What fortune? The money she's been leeching off us? Daphne, please, Elliot pleaded. I don't know what to do. I took a deep breath, trying to think rationally. We need to stand firm on this, Elliot. If we give in now, she'll never stop. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. You're right, he said finally. I'll talk to her again. Make it clear that this isn't up for discussion. After we hung up, I sat down heavily on the bed, surrounded by half-packed suitcases. This should have been a joyous time, full of anticipation for our big opportunity. Instead, it felt tainted by Mabel's constant interference. I picked up my phone again, dialing Clara's number. I needed a friendly ear, someone outside the situation who could offer some perspective. Clara? It's me. Got a minute. As I poured out the whole story to my friend, I felt some of the tension leaving my body. Clara listened patiently, then offered her advice. Daphne, honey, you need to focus on what's important here. This Paris deal could change everything for you and Elliot. Don't let Mabel derail that. But how do we stop her? I asked, feeling helpless. You stand your ground, Clara said firmly. Both of you, united front, make it clear that this is non-negotiable. After we hung up, I felt more resolved. Clara was right. We couldn't let Mabel's drama overshadow this opportunity. When Elliot got home that evening, I was waiting for him in the living room. We need to talk, I said, patting the seat next to me on the couch. He sat down, looking wary. About mom? I nodded. About mom, about Paris, about her future. Elliot, we can't keep letting her control our lives like this. He sighed, rubbing his face. I know. You're right. But what do we do? I took his hand, squeezing it gently. We stand together. We tell her in no uncertain terms that she's not coming to Paris and that if she continues to spread lies about us, we'll have no choice but to cut ties completely. Elliot looked at me, a mix of fear and determination in his eyes. Okay, he said softly. Okay, let's do it. As we sat there, planning our confrontation with Mabel, I felt a glimmer of hope. Whatever came next, at least we were facing it together. The envelope arrived on a Tuesday, innocuous and unassuming. I almost tossed it with the junk mail, but something made me pause. The return address was unfamiliar, a law firm I'd never heard of. Elliot, I called out, my voice tight with apprehension. You need to see this. He appeared from his home office, brow furrowed at my tone. What is it? I handed him the envelope. It's addressed to both of us. We sat at the kitchen table as Elliot carefully opened it. His face paled as he scanned the contents. It's, it's a notice of pending legal action against us for elder financial abuse. The room spun. What? That's ridiculous. Who would? But I knew the answer before I finished the question. Mabel. Elliot nodded grimly. She's claiming we've been systematically draining her accounts, manipulating her into giving us money. I laughed bitterly. That's rich, coming from her. We need to call our lawyer. As Elliot made the call, I paced the kitchen, my mind racing. How had it come to this? And more importantly, how far was Mabel willing to go? Our lawyer, Sarah, arrived within the hour. As we explained the situation, her face grew increasingly grave. This is serious, she said, leafing through the documents. These allegations, if proven, could not only damage your reputation but potentially your business as well. But their lies. I exploded. We have bank statements, records of every transaction. We can prove she's the one who's been taking from us. Sarah held up a hand. I believe you, Daphne. But we need to approach this carefully. Mabel's playing a dangerous game, and we need to make sure we have all our ducks in a row. As Sarah outlined our options, a thought nagged at me. How had Mabel afforded a lawyer? Last we knew, 
She was practically begging us for money. Elliot, I interrupted. Did your mother ever mention any other sources of income? Investments, maybe? He shook his head, looking puzzled. No, why? I turned to Sarah. Is there any way we can look into Mabel's finances? I have a feeling there's more going on here than we know. Sarah nodded slowly. We can request financial disclosures as part of the legal process. It might give us a clearer picture of what we're dealing with. After Sarah left, Elliot and I sat in stunned silence. Our Paris trip, once a beacon of hope, now felt like a distant dream. I can't believe she'd do this, Elliot murmured, his voice thick with emotion. My own mother. I reached across the table, squeezing his hand. We'll get through this, Elliot. We have the truth on our side. The next few days were a blur of legal consultations and frantic phone calls. We had to postpone our Paris meeting, explaining the situation to a very understanding Gideon. But as we dug deeper into Mabel's finances, a disturbing pattern emerged. Look at this, I said, pointing to a series of transactions on my laptop screen. Large deposits, always just under the reporting threshold. And look at the dates, they coincide with her biggest demands for money from us. Elliot leaned in, his face a mask of confusion. But where is this money coming from? And if she had it, why was she always asking us for more? A sickening realization dawned on me. Elliot, what if she's involved in something illegal? Money laundering, maybe? He recoiled, as if I'd slapped him. No. No, that's impossible. My mother wouldn't. Wouldn't she? I pressed. Think about it. The constant need for cash, the lavish spending, the way she always seemed to bounce back no matter how much she claimed to be struggling. Elliot stood abruptly, pacing the room. This is crazy. We can't accuse my mother of being a criminal. We might not have a choice, I said softly. If we don't get to the bottom of this, she could destroy everything we've built. As the weight of the situation settled over us, I felt a steely resolve forming in my gut. Mabel had pushed us too far this time. It was time to fight back. I picked up my phone, dialing Clara's number. Clara? It's me. I need a favor. You still have that contact in the financial crimes unit, right? Elliot's head snapped up, his eyes wide. Daphne, what are you doing? I met his gaze, unflinching. What we should have done a long time ago. We're going to find out exactly what your mother's been up to, and we're going to put a stop to it. As I explained the situation to Clara, I saw the conflict warring in Elliot's eyes. But beneath the pain and confusion, there was something else. A glimmer of determination. Okay, he said quietly as I hung up. Okay, let's do this. But Daphne, if we go down this road, there's no going back. Are you sure? I took his hand, squeezing it tightly. I'm sure. Whatever happens, we face it together. As we settled into wait for Clara's call back, I felt a mix of dread and anticipation. We were about to uncover the truth about Mabel, for better or worse. And nothing would ever be the same again. The drive to Mabel's house felt like the longest 30 minutes of my life. Elliot sat beside me, his jaw clenched, knuckles white on the steering wheel. The file from Clara's contact in the financial crimes unit lay heavy in my lap, a damning compilation of evidence we could no longer ignore. Are you sure about this? Elliot asked, his voice barely above a whisper. I reached over, squeezing his arm. We have to do this, Elliot. For us, for the business, for everything we've worked for. He nodded, eyes fixed on the road ahead. As we pulled into Mabel's driveway, I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the confrontation to come. Mabel answered the door in a silk robe, surprise flickering across her face. Elliot? Daphne? What are you doing here? We need to talk, Mom, Elliot said, his voice firm. Can we come in? She hesitated for a moment before stepping aside. As we entered her lavishly decorated living room, I couldn't help but notice the new artwork on the walls, the gleaming crystal vase on the coffee table, more evidence of her inexplicable wealth. What's this about? Mabel asked, perching on the edge of an armchair. If it's about that silly legal misunderstanding. It's not a misunderstanding, I interrupted, my patience wearing thin. And I think you know that. Mabel's eyes narrowed. 
I don't know what you're implying, Daphne, but I don't appreciate your tone. Elliot stepped forward, placing a hand on my shoulder. Mom, we know about the money, the deposits, the laundering, all of it. The color drained from Mabel's face. I... I don't know what you're talking about. I opened the file, spreading documents across the coffee table. Bank statements, transaction records, even surveillance photos of Mabel meeting with known criminals. It's all here, Mabel. Every lie, every scheme. For a moment, Mabel seemed to deflate, the carefully crafted facade crumbling. Then, like a cornered animal, she lashed out. So what if it is? You think you're so perfect, don't you? Little Miss Self-Made, with your precious jewelry business. You have no idea what it's like to struggle, to fight for every scrap. Mom, stop, Elliot pleaded, but Mabel was on a roll. I did what I had to do to survive, to give Elliot the life he deserved. And now you want to take it all away? She turned to Elliot, eyes brimming with tears. Are you going to let her do this to me? Your own mother? I watched Elliot, my heart pounding. This was the moment of truth, the crossroads we'd been hurtling towards for months. Elliot took a deep breath, his voice steady. Mom, what you've done, it's wrong. It's illegal. And it has to stop. Mabel recoiled as if she'd been slapped. You're choosing her over me? After everything I've sacrificed for you. This isn't about choosing sides, Elliot said, his voice cracking. It's about doing what's right. We can't keep enabling this behavior. It has to end. Mabel's face contorted with rage. You ungrateful little. She lunged for the file, scattering papers across the room. I jumped to my feet, grabbing her wrists. Mabel, stop. This isn't just about us anymore. The authorities know. If you don't come clean now, it'll only be worse when they come for you. She wrenched away from me, stumbling back. Get out. Both of you, get out of my house. Elliot stepped forward, his face a mask of pain. Mom, please, let us help you. We can find a way through this, but you have to be honest. For a moment, I saw a flicker of something in Mabel's eyes. Regret? Fear? But it was quickly replaced by cold fury. I don't need your help. I've managed just fine on my own all these years. And I'll continue to do so. Even if it means losing your son? I asked quietly. Mabel's gaze snapped to mine, then to Elliot. The silence stretched between us, heavy with unspoken words and shattered trust. Finally, Elliot spoke, his voice barely above a whisper. Mom. This is your last chance. Come clean. Let us help you make this right. Or. Or what? Mabel sneered. You'll turn me in? Your own mother? Elliot's shoulders sagged. If that's what it takes to protect our family, our business. Yes. The finality in his voice seemed to hit Mabel like a physical blow. She sank onto the couch, suddenly looking every one of her years. Get out, she whispered. Just get out. As we left, I glanced back to see Mabel hunched over, her face in her hands. For a moment, I felt a pang of sympathy. But then I remembered everything she'd done, every lie, every manipulation, and my resolve hardened. In the car, Elliot sat motionless, staring at nothing. I reached over, taking his hand. You did the right thing, I said softly. He nodded, squeezing my hand. I know but it doesn't make it any easier. As we drove home, the weight of what had just happened settled over us. We'd confronted Mabel, drawn our line in the sand, but the battle was far from over. The real test was yet to come. The silence in our home was deafening. Elliot sat at the kitchen table, staring blankly at the untouched cup of coffee in front of him. I watched him from the doorway, my heart aching. It had been three days since our confrontation with Mabel and the weight of his decision hung heavy in the air. Elliot, I said softly, moving to sit beside him. We need to talk about what happens next. He looked up, his eyes red-rimmed from lack of sleep. What is there to talk about? I've cut ties with my own mother. I've chosen our business, our future, over her. Isn't that enough? I reached out, taking his hand. It's not about what's enough. It's about protecting ourselves, our livelihood. We need to make this official. Elliot's brow furrowed. Official? What do you mean? 
I took a deep breath. I've been talking to our lawyer. She thinks we should file a restraining order against Mabel to protect our assets, our reputation. Elliot jerked his hand away as if I'd burned him. A restraining order? Against my mother? Daphne, that's, that's too far. Is it? I pressed. After everything she's done? The theft, the lies, the threats to our business. He stood abruptly, pacing the kitchen. She's still my mother, Daphne. I can't just erase her from our lives completely. I felt my frustration rising. Elliot, she's made her choice. She chose her schemes over us. We have to protect ourselves. By legally banishing her? Elliot's voice rose. Do you have any idea what that would do to her? To our family? Our family? I stood, facing him. Elliot, we're the family now. You and me. Our business, our future. That's what we need to protect. The doorbell rang, cutting through the tension. We both froze, exchanging wary glances. I moved to answer it, Elliot close behind. I opened the door to find Mabel standing there, looking smaller and more fragile than I'd ever seen her. Can I come in? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. I hesitated, looking to Elliot. He nodded, his face a mask of conflicting emotions. Mabel settled onto our couch, her hands twisting in her lap. I've been doing a lot of thinking, she began, about what you said, about the choices I've made. I sat across from her. Elliot perched on the arm of my chair. We waited in tense silence for her to continue. I... I've made a mess of things, Mabel admitted, her voice cracking. I never meant for it to go this far. It started small, you know? A little extra cash here and there. But then it grew, and I couldn't stop. I didn't want to stop. Elliot leaned forward. Why, Mom? Why did you do it? Mabel's eyes filled with tears. I was scared, Elliot. Scared of being left behind, of becoming irrelevant. I saw you and Daphne, so successful, so happy. I wanted to be part of that. I thought. I thought if I had money, if I could keep up with your lifestyle, you'd still need me. The room fell silent as her words sank in. I felt a mix of pity and anger swirling in my chest. That doesn't excuse what you did, I said finally. The lies, the manipulation, the threats to our business. Mabel nodded, wiping at her eyes. I know. I know it doesn't. That's why I'm here. I... I've turned myself in. Elliot gasped. What? I went to the police this morning, Mabel explained. I told them everything, about the money laundering, the fraud, all of it. They're probably searching my house right now. I sat back, stunned. This was the last thing I'd expected. Elliot knelt in front of his mother, taking her hands. Mom, why? Why now? Mabel looked at him, then at me, because I realized what I was about to lose. My son, my family. I couldn't bear it. I'd rather face the consequences of my actions than lose you both forever. I felt tears pricking at my eyes. Despite everything, I couldn't help but be moved by her admission. What happens now? I asked, my voice hoarse. Mabel straightened her shoulders. Now I face the music. I'll probably go to jail, at least for a while. But before that happens, I wanted to come here. To apologize to both of you. And to ask to ask if there's any chance you could forgive me. Not now, maybe not for a long time, but someday. Elliot looked at me, his eyes pleading. I took a deep breath, weighing everything we'd been through against this moment of vulnerability. It won't be easy, I said slowly. There's a lot of hurt, a lot of mistrust to overcome. But if you're truly committed to making amends, to changing, maybe we can start to rebuild, slowly. Elliot's face lit up with relief and gratitude. He squeezed my hand before turning back to Mabel. We'll take it one day at a time, Mom. Together. As Mabel broke down in tears, Elliot enveloping her in a hug, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. The road ahead would be long and difficult, but for the first time in months, I felt a glimmer of hope. We had faced our toughest challenge and come out stronger. Whatever came next, we would face it as a united front. The Parisian sun streamed through the windows of our hotel room, casting a warm glow on the scattered jewelry samples and business documents strewn across the bed. I stood at the window, 
taking in the view of the Eiffel Tower in the distance, a sight that still felt surreal after all we'd been through to get here. Daphne? Elliot's voice pulled me from my reverie. The car's here. Are you ready? I turned to face him, smoothing down my blazer. As ready as I'll ever be. This is it, Elliot. Everything we've worked for. He crossed the room, taking my hands in his. We've got this. Together. The drive to the headquarters of Maison Lumiere, one of France's most prestigious jewelry retailers, was a blur of nervous anticipation. As we entered the sleek, modern building, I felt a flutter of anxiety in my stomach. Mr. and Mrs. Pearson, a smartly dressed woman, approached us. I'm Sophie Dubois, head of acquisitions. We're delighted to have you here. The meeting room was intimidating, all glass and chrome, with a view of the Paris skyline that threatened to distract me from the task at hand. But as soon as we began our presentation, everything else faded away. This was our moment, our chance to take our small business global. I watched the faces of the executives as Elliot walked them through our business plan, saw their eyes light up as I unveiled our latest designs. When we finished, there was a moment of silence that felt like an eternity. Finally, Monsieur Lefebvre, the CEO, spoke. Madam E.T. Monsieur Pearson, we are most impressed. Your designs are fresh, innovative, yet with a timeless quality that aligns perfectly with our brand. We would be honored to feature your collection in our stores. The rest of the meeting passed in a whirlwind of handshakes, contract discussions, and champagne toasts. As we left the building, I felt lightheaded with joy and disbelief. We did it, Elliot whispered, pulling me close. We really did it. That evening, as we celebrated over dinner at a small bistro, my phone buzzed with a text. It was from Clara. How did it go? The suspense is killing me. I smiled, quickly typing back. We got the deal. Call you tomorrow with details. Give Gideon a hug from us. As I put my phone away, Elliot reached across the table, taking my hand. I couldn't have done this without you, Daphne. Through everything, the business struggles, the issues with mom, You've been my rock. I squeezed his hand, feeling a lump form in my throat. We did this together, Elliot, as a team. His face grew serious. Speaking of mom, I got an email from her lawyer today. I felt a flicker of anxiety. Oh, what did it say? She's completed her first month of mandated therapy. The lawyer says she's making progress, really confronting her issues. Elliot paused, his eyes searching mine. She's asked if we might consider visiting when we get back. I took a deep breath, considering my words carefully. How do you feel about that? Elliot sighed. Honestly, I'm not sure. Part of me wants to believe she's changed, that we can rebuild some kind of relationship. But another part is scared of getting hurt again. I finished for him. He nodded. Exactly. I thought about Mabel, about all the pain and chaos she'd caused. But I also thought about her vulnerability that day in our living room, her willingness to face the consequences of her actions. Maybe, I said slowly, we can take it one step at a time. Set clear boundaries, but leave the door open for healing. If she's genuinely committed to change, we can be there to support that journey. Elliot's eyes welled with tears. You'd be willing to do that? After everything? I reached up, cupping his cheek. For you, for us, yes. We're stronger together now. We can face anything, even this. As we walked back to our hotel that night, hand in hand under the twinkling lights of Paris, I felt a sense of peace settle over me. We'd weathered the storm, emerged stronger, and now stood on the brink of a new chapter in our lives. The next morning, as we packed for our flight home, Elliot paused, a thoughtful expression on his face. You know, with this deal, we could afford to move, get a bigger place, maybe even start thinking about. A family, I finished, a smile spreading across my face. He nodded, looking both excited and nervous. Is that something you'd want? I crossed the room, wrapping my arms around him. With you? Absolutely. As we left the hotel, stepping out into the bustling streets of Paris, I felt a surge of excitement for the future. We had faced our toughest challenges and come out stronger. Our business was thriving, 
Our relationship was solid, and even the complicated dynamics with Mabel held the potential for healing. Whatever came next, expanding our business, starting a family, rebuilding relationships, we would face it together. We had learned the hard way that trust, communication, and unwavering support for each other were the foundations of both a successful partnership and a thriving business. As we hailed a taxi to the airport, I took one last look at the city that had marked the beginning of our new chapter. The road ahead might not always be smooth, but I knew that together, Elliot and I could handle whatever life threw our way. Our journey had taught us that true strength lies not in avoiding challenges, but in facing them head on, with love, understanding, and an unbreakable bond. And that, I realized, was the most precious jewel of all.